going on, leaguers? Welcome to the Spectacular Sporter League. I'm the Pandan Superman, the mayor of Hype City, Hazy Room. And as always, I'm joined by the God of Night, the Prime Minister of Post Production, Deep Voice. And we are here, the league is here in the Hall of Spoilers to talk a little bit about Team Titans. Bang, bang. We just got some news that, in fact, in 2018, this following year, if you're lost in time and space, we're going to get a Team Titans show from Warner Brothers, and they're going to do it in a brand new streaming service that they're planning on putting out. Details are still not out there, but we're getting news. It's developing as time passes. I'm going to hit you guys with just a readout of the press release from DC Comics, just to give you guys a preface to what we're going to be talking about today. Um, So without further ado, Titans, which is what the show is going to be called, follows a group of young, soon-to-be superheroes recruited from every corner of the DC universe. Uh In this action-packed series, Dick Grayson emerges from the shadows to become the leader of a fearless band of new heroes, including Starfire, Raven, and many others. Titans is a dramatic live-action adventure series that will explore and celebrate one of the most popular comic book teams ever. Mm. So right there... We got we got we got some things. We got some confirmed characters: Dick Grayson, Starfire, and Raven. But they said many others, and that is what this video is about. Oh, this yeah. video is our ten Titans or ten DC characters we want to see appear as Titans in this Titans show. I said Ooh. Titans a lot of times, and we're gonna say okay. it many more times because I'm hyped. <laughs> I'm hyped. Even though it's gonna be on a DC streaming universe and streaming uh, service, we may be talking about that. You know, on, on another video, we'll mm-hmm. see. I'm still hyped for this, but let's get into it, man. Let's start off with some honorable mentions. These are so some of these people, you know, haven't typically been known as Titans, but we just want to see them on the show. So, Deep Voice, man, start us off. Uh, there is Barbara Gordon as Oracle slash Batgirl, uh, and it seems like there may be a good chance that she's going to be on here. Uh, and we obviously didn't really put her on the list because, uh, despite the fact that we're big fans of hers, uh, there are some other characters on here that we felt were maybe more deserving on right. the list. Right. I mean, the reason why we feel like she has a good chance at being in the show is because originally Titans was conceptualized as a show that was going to be on TNT. And they were actually casting for Barbara Gordon to play Oracle in that show. Unfortunately, TNT did not pick up the show. But if you look at the team of people on this new Titans iteration, um, which is going to be written by Akiva Goldsman, she had written Barbara Gordon in. So I think uh, she she stands a good chance of being in there. But next up, I mean, this one's this one's a shoe in. We want to see some Deathstroke, baby. Come on, mm, man. The greatest adversary of the Teen Titans. It's Slade Wilson himself, Deathstroke. I mean, he's gonna be in the movies. It seems like. But I mean, come on. Anyway, um, following up on Deathstroke, we got Jason Todd, aka Red Hood. Because why the hell not? <laughs> why? Why not? Yeah, that'd be pretty cool. Maybe have a uh, you know someone to rival. Dick Grayson, a.k.a. Nightwing, maybe Robin. We're not sure what we're going with here, but... Yes. You know, you got a... Jason Todd is a cult favorite at this point. Yeah. So yeah. it'd be pretty dope to see him pop up in a Titan show. Now, I don't know if they're going to let some of these characters rock in the movies and in the show. I mean, for starters, Dick Grayson, I mean, he's getting his own movie as Nightwing. So I don't know what DC's rules about this are, but it does seem like they're saving Red Hood for the movies. So I don't know. We'll see. Um, and our last honorable mention is Hawk and Dove. Now, Hawk and Dove have had, have had like several iterations. I mean, I can't even, there's been a whole bunch of characters that, or characters in DC's comics that have, uh, been the Hawk or played the Hawk and, and Dove roles. I mean, the original Hawk and Dove were Hank Hall and Don Hall, mm-hmm. um, who were brothers, but there's been, uh, I'm trying to think there's a, there's a female Hawk and Dove, mm-hmm. um, Don Granger and Holly Granger. And, uh, you know, there's been many iterations, but just because they have such a history with the team, I'll just throw them in there as honorable mentions. We, you know, me and Boyce aren't really sold on those characters, per se, as, you know, having them in the show, we don't really care either way. Yeah. But it would be a nice homage to the, to the history of the team. Yeah. Needless to say, a redesign would be uh, welcomed. It's necessary. It has to happen. Yeah. Also, those were two characters that were originally in the conceptualization of uh, Titans when it was going to be on TNT. Um, in that iteration, they had Hank Hall as Hawk and Don Granger as Dove. No doubt. Um, they were supposed to be like a romantic pairing. So there's a chance that they come back in the series just on that. But anyway, let's get to our 10 characters we want to see in Titans. Our 10 Titans that we want to see in the upcoming show, Titans. Deep Boy, start us off, man. All right, we're going to start off right at the top. 
with Kid Flash slash Impulse. We're kind of thinking maybe if they have the Kid Flash character, but as Bart Allen, the character that is typically from the future. Not necessarily has to be from the future. That's what you want, Deep Boys. That's what I want. Don't speak for me. I want Wally West. You want Wally West, but I think with Bart Allen, you could definitely open up some interesting storylines. And again, we don't know exactly how you know how much sort of cross of crossing of the streams the shows and the movies are going to be doing. If you haven't already been watching The Flash on the CW Tuesday nights, which you should be, Wally West has been a character for quite some time on that show already. So it would be interesting to see what they're going to do to reconcile that if they would have the Kid Flash in a Titan show. If they do have the Kid Flash as currently in uh, in Flash and the the Arrowverse, they need to do his. They need to change his riding up a little bit and make him be a little bit more like Wally West, the fun loving, happy go lucky Wally West we all know and love. Yes, sir. Um, with that being said, speaking of another character that's also been in the Arrowverse before, we're going with. A- Sorry, Arsenal. I was going to say Red Arrow. Mm -hmm. Um, Arsenal slash Speedy, a.k.a. Roy Harper. Yeah. So, Roy Harper, mm -hmm. Colton Haynes in in Arrow. He's one of our favorite characters. Um, He ultimately left the show. But uh, we'd love to see him back in in, in that, that Arsenal suit, man. Yeah, no, it would be at... Uh, it would be absolutely dope, and, and it just it almost feels like it is a prerequisite for a Teen Titan show or any sort of DC team. You have a speedster on there, Kid Flash, and you have Arsenal in there. I mean, if you if you're talking about having the classic team, Dick Grayson, Starfire, then you have to have Kid Flash in there, and as well as Arsenal, uh, especially since they're going with a drama approach. They could have you know Roy Harper has some very dark aspects of his character and a dark past that they could absolutely. explore. Absolutely. I mean, Roy Harper has has had extensive an extensive history in the comics with drug abuse, yep. and uh, that would be an interesting story, an interesting story route to go for Titans, and definitely could add some of that drama, man. Mm-hmm. Um, so next up, you know, we're speaking of uh, of uh, Titans characters who've played a role in, in Teen Titans in the past. We've got Aqualad, but we've got a little bit of twist Uh-oh. on Aqualad. We want Calderon, aka Jackson Hyde. So Jackson Hyde in the comics, uh, if you don't know, he's the son of Black Manta. Uh, and uh, I think it's better to use him than Garth because, you know, for lack of a better way to say it, adds a little bit of diversity, one, in, in many ways. You know, not just, you know, in terms of, uh, you know, ethnicity, but also Jackson Hyde in the comics, uh, you know, he's gay. Yeah. And uh, that could also add to, you know, some of the storytelling uh, abilities of, um, of the show. Yeah, and that's not to say that Garth can't make an appearance or be somewhere in the show. Uh, yeah. But as an Aqualad character, uh, we would definitely like to see, uh, you know, Calderon or, you know, I guess the son of a villain, so to speak. Yeah. That's another interesting uh, character element and character plot that they could add to the show. Yeah, and also with the movie Aquaman on the Horizon, I feel like the the Atlantic aspect of story, the Atlantis aspect of storytelling, that the Aquaman character could allow for some popularity to grow for characters like, uh, you know, Kyle Rom. Not that he's not already popular, because, I mean, Young Justice, mm. I mean, Kyle Rom, that's pretty much what put him on the map for us, personally. Bon, bon. Um, so next up, another classic, classic Teen Titans member, Donna Troy, a.k.a. Wonder Girl. Now, I don't know if the, I want her to be called Wonder Girl, per se. Mm-hmm. I would love for them to come up with a different name. I was just thought Wonder Girl was just a little bit of a, you know, like an old school kind of yeah. outdated name, a little so too to on, speak. A little too on the nose. Wonder Girl, too Wonder, Wonder Woman, you know. Right. But likewise, with Wonder Woman coming out this year, 2017, the popularity of, a, of an Amazonian-based character could be, uh, you know, could work well for the show. And I think Donna Troy, she has an extensive history with, with the Titans. I mean, even in the in, even in the picture they used um, for DC used for the uh, press release, uh, you actually see Donna Troy and Wonder Girl from one of the old Teen Titans covers. Yeah. So, um, you know, I feel I feel like that's pretty much a shoe in if you're if you're gonna you know have a list of characters that you want to see appear as Titans. Yeah, and I think I mean I myself I have a predilection for some strong women. Ever since Word. Rogue on the X Men TV show, uh, animated show, why don't I have a Donna Troy character that's out there busting heads? Just Bust kicking names. ass, busting through walls, picking up cars, taking names, doing all that kind of stuff. I mean, her and her and Starfire would clean up, clean up the the, the damn place. That'd be dope. It would see. clean house yep. if they was on the same team. Absolutely. But anyway, Deep Boys, hit us with the next one. The next character that we'd like to see in the Teen Titans show 
is Zatanna Zatara, resident uh, magician of the Teen Titans. And, uh, you know, she's kind of really, I mean, aside from Raven, she's really the only other uh, character that would delve into the magic realm or the mystical realm. Uh, and this, now, one, this one was one that was a little tough for us to kind of decide on uh, for probably reasons that Hazy will elucidate on. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, I mean, first off, you know, just want to make a minor correction that she's actually never been a Teen Titan member officially. Because ah. typically speaking, Zatanna is the same age or roughly the same age as, uh, as uh, Bruce Wayne or Batman. Typically in the comics, that's how, you know, they're usually close in age range. Mm-hmm. However, Young Justice established a younger Zatanna where she was part of, uh, you know, the Young Justice team. True. Um, early on, um, you might even call her one of the founding members of that team. Yes. And, uh, you know, she's portrayed as more around the age of, uh, Nightwing. Mm-hmm. And, uh, I mean, let's be honest, we love Young Justice and we love Zatanna. Mm-hmm. I know, uh, DC's got Justice League Dark in the work, in the works and Zatanna's <laughs> basically a shoo-in for that movie. I can't see that movie being done without Zatanna. Yeah. But, uh, you know, that being said, I would love to see her. I kind of like the, the way Young Justice Young Justice had it. Mm-hmm. Um, had her kind of like as a younger character. I felt like she fit in with the team. That being said, you do have a resident magician or someone who uses the power of uh the uh you know of magic mm-hmm. uh in Raven. So I can see a little redundancy there, but it yeah. still would be great to see her. Yeah, but in a sense, I mean they kinda I guess balance each other out in the sense that Raven's more into the dark arts and Zatanna is, you know, a little bit more I guess white magic or friendly magic. <laughs> or she's uses, definitely more on the lighter side yeah, of things. Agree. Uses magic for the, for for good things, and you know that's maybe that could be a way for them to kind of squeeze in Doctor Fate or any of those characters there, which you know there hasn't been much Doctor Fate in anything DC in quite some time. True, true. I need to see some Doctor Fate somehow. Yep. They really do need to. Doctor Doctor Fate is an underrated character. I would love to see Doctor Fate in a DC property. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. But uh, well, who we got next, boys? Right after that, we got Superman's clone, Connell, Connor Kent, also known as Superboy. Mm. And again, this is a character that we're kind of basing this off a little bit more of what we saw in Young Justice. But this is yet again another character since this, t- this show is aiming to be a drama. Uh, another character that usually has uh, you know anger management issues. He has problems, existential issues, really. With yeah. who he is and where he fits in, and his his relationship or lack thereof with his is I guess his father, Superman, right? And right. It, and also it'd be really cool to see. I mean, I, I personally think that Superboy is probably a rather popular character out there, uh, mm. and you know to have a Kryptonian or something that's like a Kryptonian type of character that is nerfed, that isn't going around flying and you know saving the day by any means. Keyword necessary. there is nerfed. Thank you, sir, because yes. that's what I was gonna say. <laughs> a character that's that's nerfed uh, would be dope to see in this show. Right, and not only that, I mean he has some history with his DNA also being intertwined with Lex Luthor, oh, yes. and I think uh, him battling that duality of being related to Superman and Lex Luthor. I mean, that's prime storytelling opportunities right there, Absolutely. to say the least. Yeah. But next up is a choice that Deep Boys didn't want on this list, everybody. <laughs> Blue Beetle. I'm putting Blue Beetle on this list, man. Blue Beetle. Yeah, I mean, you know, the Scarab technology is really cool. I, I haven't been crazy about the Jaime Reyes character. But that is an aspect of, I guess, Cosmic DC that they could maybe put in there. Uh, those stories were cool. And seeing the other Beetles battle it out again in Young Justice. I mean, it's probably a current... Uh, a theme that you see in this list and our discussion of it, but there are some interesting things that they could bring in, uh, as well as have you know a character that is Mexican and uh, would have his own unique backstory and, and point of view coming into this. Another thing that I wanted to bring up and bringing up B- Blue Beetle is the fact that you also have the opportunity to bring in another legacy character. I mean, a lot of the characters that we've named already, mm-hmm. I think all of them actually have had legacy characters, you yeah. know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Characters you know, um, who, you know, have mentored them and are, you know, bigger heroes in the universe. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, with the exception of Zatara, Zatanna's dad. I don't say, I wouldn't say he's a bigger hero, but nonetheless, a predecessor. Yeah. With Blue Beetle, you have, you have Ted Cord, you know, who is the previous Blue Beetle. And DC has repeatedly said that they have plans for Ted Cord. Mm-hmm. And I don't know if we're going to see Ted Cord in the movie. So I don't know what their plans are, unless they're, you know, thinking about a solo show for, for him or something like that. Mm-hmm. But they do, they have repeatedly said that they they have plans for Ted Cord because actually Ray Palmer, who uh, 
you know, the Atom, who appears in, who, who actually started off in Arrow, but now appears in Legends of Tomorrow, originally he was written as Ted Kord. Uh, in the CW or Arrowverse, they were dropping like Ted Kord hints and Kord industry hints all over the place. Mm. And it was pretty much, you know, assuming that Ted Kord was going to appear. But last minute, you know, DC higher up swooped in and said, all right, we don't want you to use Ted Kord. We got plans for him, but you could use Ray Palmer. So that's, there's some opportunity there. It's opportunity there to bring in Ted Kord if they wanted to. Yeah, no, absolutely. But on to the next. Yo, we've got a, this one is kind of a. I think this this guy is someone who we who we want to see later into the show once you know Dick Grayson or Nightwing or Robin because they actually don't say in the press release and I think that's very clever. They don't say in the press release whether or not he'll be Robin or Nightwing. Mm-hmm. But uh, this character I feel like might appear a little bit later on. And that's Tim Drake, aka Robin, aka red robin and for damn sure you're gonna see the picture that we that we think of when we see red robin because i just want to see that costume in live action man beastly costume and if you guys don't already know tim drake is my favorite robin but like hazy said i totally agree you're gonna have dick grace in there he's gonna be the robin at first and probably the robin for the entirety of the show but that doesn't mean that they any of these characters not just dick grace is gonna have i guess a younger uh protege so to speak um to to kind of come in and they can teach and there's there's like a brotherly you know uh aspect to the storyline that they could uh, employ here uh but it would definitely i mean you can never have too many bat family characters in my opinion and having tim drake someone who's uh you know totally different from dick grayson and would definitely fit in as someone who is rather smart and technology savvy uh, absolutely would be real cool to see absolutely next up We've got Static. Some people call him Static Shock. You're wrong. That's the name of a TV show. His name is Static. <laughs> we want to see. We want to see Virgil Hawkins in this show. And this this is this is also somewhat influenced by Young Justice because he does appear in the second season. Mm-hmm. But I feel for the most part, we just want to see Static because he's a cool character who we grew up with via the animated series, who just never seems to get shine in the comics. He's yeah. had his own comic book line where you know during the new 52 and it got canceled but he's a a genuinely cool character who dc has repeatedly have had rumors about uh you know potentially having his his own show unfortunately Jaden whack ass smith was associated with the role i said it i said it was associated with (laughs) associated with the role hopefully they don't cast him if they do pick him up um for titans but i would love to see i mean just the idea and the look of electric based powers yes and i feel like that's something that's going to become popular with black lightning on the horizon if that show is successful i think you know lightning based powers is a cool way to go and static you know he's super cool man he flies on like this freaking metal disc like that's a i mean come on man absolutely he's he's a dope character uh it's weird because i feel that there are people out there that like it like us but there are also people out there that are always constantly wondering why do we need a static anything comic book tv show movie i feel like there's sure. almost like as much resistance in the other direction and i don't quite get it because if, if anyone that watched the show back in the day that was a dope show dope character and i absolutely don't see why that character can't get a shot uh especially in this show indeed indeed well said man mm-hmm. but uh last or somewhat last because i got i got one more character that i want to talk about that's not officially on the list mm-hmm. but there's a reason why but our technically our last character is tara mm. A.K.A. the traitorous Judas. <laughs> yeah. Okay, of the team. This one almost seems like a no-brainer because, again, if Deathstroke's an honorable mention, if the Teen Titans and Deathstroke are in the same show, movie, etc., then you kind of have to have Terry in there to, to redo the Judas contract storyline. Now You know what's going to happen. It's most likely. It should happen. It most likely will happen. And it was done very well in the Teen Titans show. Not bum as Teen, Titan, t- Teen Titans go. Uh <laughs> And it came out in the in the recent movie, which we reviewed, YouTube.com slash Spectacular Spoiler League. If you guys want to check it out, you're already on the channel anyway. Check on those Indeed. videos. Um, and it wasn't done so well. But yet again, with this show and w- ha- with them having enough time to really flesh out the story, I mean, who knows how long they could, they could you know, elongate this story, so to speak. It could last a whole season. It could last two seasons where we, the audience, we know Tara, she's a traitor. Indeed. She's out there to Indeed. stab the Teen Titans in the back. But we don't know when she's going to dig that knife into any of these characters' back uh, to betray them. 
Absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, but last but not least, okay, you guys are probably screaming at us if you're a Teen Titans fan. You probably had two characters that we didn't name. Cyborg, <laughs> right? That's one. All right, and, and we actively, I ain't going to front, we named Cyborg, but there's a couple reasons. One, he's a bum ass. <laughs> oh, booyah! <laughs> booyah! Uh, <laughs> nah, I mean, he was great in the show. It's just, he seems to be being pushed as a Justice League character. Mm-hmm. And they've all but abandoned him and his history with uh, the Teen Titans in a, in a way. Unfortunately. Um, so, I mean, we just we just felt like, you know, we didn't really want to see Cyborg on the list. Um, especially, you know, him, him being in Justice League. So, the second character is Beast Boy. Now, Beast Boy is, I mean, he is undeniably associated with the Teen Titans. You know, like, he's right there with, with people like Robin, like Starfire. Like Raven, like this guy is always considered a Teen Titan. Mm-hmm. But Jeff Johns, who's exec, who's serving as one of the executive producers on the show, another executive producer by the way, Greg Berlanti mm-hmm. from Arrow, Legends of Tomorrow, Flash, Supergirl, and the upcoming Black Lightning. That's interesting to know in case you're you know hoping for some uh, Arrowverse integration there. Nice. But anyway, Jeff Johns tweeted this: the following. He said, "Yes, very excited to be writing the Titans again and working with this crew, referring to the Titan show." Extremely excited. Will be something very different. Dot, dot, dot. Hashtag Beast Boy. Mm. So although it wasn't in the original press release, it's all but confirmed in our opinions that Beast Boy is going to be in this show. Yeah. So we felt, you know, in good conscience, we could use his spot for somebody else because let's be honest, he's pretty much going to be in the show. Yeah. It's happening. He's going to be on. He's going to be on there. Yeah. But anyway, guys, let us know who you want to see in the upcoming Titan show. Let us know if you're going to, you know, if you plan on checking out this subscription service that DC is going to have. And by all means, if you want to join up with this spectacular spoiler league, you can't be a Teen Titan. Let's be honest. It's, <laughs> it's out of the question. But you can be a member of the spectacular spoiler league. Go ahead and hit that subscribe button and check us out and all our videos that we drop. We'll catch you guys later. Deep boys, we heading out of the Hall of Spoilers. Yes. Bong bong. Booyah! <laughs> SSL. Go! <laughs> SSL, yo, get this guy out of here. <laughs> we out of here. Peace out, y'all. Peace. <laughs> Booyah! I had to do the game. Sorry. <laughs> yo, Blue, Blue Beetle's whacked up. Oh, come, come on, man. That's Jaime Reyes, man. No, I'm good. Come on. Booyah! Hey. <laughs> <laughs>